Hi everyone, this is Pepe Crochets. Welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to crochet the Oceanside Cowl Top. I got the inspiration for this top on a video and photo I saw on Instagram and want to give it a try. So let's get started. For this project, I chose a weight zero lace yarn. This one in particular is a crochet thread. You can definitely use other yarns that are either weight zero or weight one, something that has good drapeability for the cowl effect. So this page basically shows some of the calculations, I guess you could call it, I did in order to make the top. We're going to start with the bust panel, so you're going to want to measure under your breast area to see how much coverage or how long you want the bottom part to be. So for me, my bust is a 32A, I needed about six and a half inches across. So I needed about 44 half double crochet foundation chains in order to get six and a half inches across the bottom of my breast area. So we're going to start with the bust panel we're going to start by making a slip knot. We're going to put the slip knot on our hook and tighten. And then we're going to start with a chain up of three. Doing the half double crochet foundation chain avoids having to do the foundation chain first and then having to go back and do the half double crochet. It just kind of consolidates the process. So now you're going to put your hook back into that first chain you did, making sure to pick up the front and the back loop. You're going to pull up a loop. Now you have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through the first loop. That's the foundation. You're going to yarn over and pull through the rest of the loops on your hook, and that's going to be for the half double crochet. Now we're always going to be working into this V shape in the back here closest to the yarn. So we're going to yarn over, put our hook into that V area, grabbing both loops. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. We're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three. So when you yarn over and pull through the first loop, you're making the foundation. And then when you yarn over and pull through the, the rest of the three loops on your hook, that's going to be your half double crochet. And once again, this is the half double crochet foundation chain stitch. So I did 44, which brought me to about six and a half inches across. Now we're going to do a chain up of two and turn our work. We're going to be using half double crochets here. So to make a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over Go into that very, very first stitch. You're going to put your hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and then pull through all three. The reason why I'm going into the very first stitch instead of skipping the stitch like I normally would do is because I decided that I didn't want to put a stitch into the very last um, stitch, which would be the top of the turning chain. So I'm putting a stitch into the very first stitch <laughs> instead of putting any stitches into the turning chain. That's going to make sense when we get to the last stitch here. So as you can see, I'm putting in another half double crochet right here. This is the end of the row. And normally I would put another stitch into that turning chain, but we're going to ignore that and we're going to go right back around. So we're going to chain two and turn our work. For this next row, we're going to begin decreasing. So we're going to decrease in the beginning and the end of the row. To decrease, you're gonna put your hook into that very first stitch and pull up a loop. Then you're going to put your hook into the very next stitch because we're decreasing 
and you're going to pull up a loop. Then you're going to finish the half double crochet by yarning over and pulling through all the loops on your hook. That will complete your first decrease. Then we're going to just half double crochet all the way to the end until we have two stitches left because we're going to be doing another decrease at the end. Doing a decrease at the beginning and the end like this is going to give you that triangular shape. So we made it to the end here. So we're going to yarn over, put a hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, and then instead of finishing the half double crochet, we're going to go into the very next stitch or the last stitch and pull up a loop. And then we're going to finish the half double crochet by yarning over and pulling through all loops on the hook for a decrease. We're going to now chain two and turn our work. And for this row, we're just doing a row of half double crochets. Remember, we're going into the very, very first stitch instead of skipping it because we're going to be skipping the uh, stitch on the turning chain. So just half double crochet all the way down. Basically, we're going to be alternating this pattern of one row with two decreases, one at the beginning and one at the end of the row, and then one row of no decreases so that there's a gradual decrease and it doesn't create this immediate triangle. It creates more of a elongated triangle for the bust area. Right now I'm showing row five. I'm once again showing the decrease. So you're going into the first stitch, pulling up a loop, the next stitch, pulling up a loop, and then yarning over and pulling through all loops on the hook for a decrease. The rest of the row is just going to be the normal half double crochets. Okay, one last time. So I have two stitches left. I'm yarning over, putting my hook into the stitch, pulling up a loop. And then to the very next stitch or the last stitch, I'm putting my hook in, pulling up a loop, and then we're finishing the half double crochet by yarning over and pulling through all loops on the hook for a decrease. So for rows six through 32, we're going to alternate this pattern of one row with two decreases, one at the beginning and one at the end, and one row of no decreases. As you're crocheting, I would also keep measuring the piece up against your bust area just to make sure that it's giving you the desired coverage. So if you feel that you need to add more rows or that the rows are starting to decrease a little bit too rapidly for your taste and isn't giving you enough coverage, what you could do is you could do two rows of no decreases and then do the third row with the decreases so it's even more gradual. For me, I wanted the top area to be more pointed. So for rows 33 to 36, I did the decrease rows for all four of those rows where I decreased at the beginning and at the end of the rows. At the end of row 36 or the beginning of row 37, I was left with six stitches. That was still a little bit too wide for me um, for the straps, so I did one more decrease at the beginning of the row, so I would end up with five stitches. So here's my strap. I wanted it to be five stitches across, and in order to just uh, elongate the strap, you're just going to keep doing rows of half double crochets chaining two, turning your work, and then doing half double crochets with no decreases. And you're going to keep doing this until you reach your desired length. For me, that was about 14 inches. Don't forget you're going to be doing the same exact thing with another bust panel, so you don't want to make the straps too, too long. Now you're going to chain one, and we're going to clean up our work by adding single crochets around the perimeter. So you're going to put your hook in, drop a loop, yarn over and then pull through the two loops on your hook for a single crochet. You're going to do that all the way down. 
Doesn't really matter where you put your stitches as long as they're fairly even. And this will just give you a nice border all the way around and clean it up. So we're just going to do that along the entire perimeter. Now we're going to start on the cowl portion of our top. For that we're going to be doing 58 foundation double crochet stitches. If you remember before, for the bust, we did foundation half double crochets. This time we're doing foundation double crochets. So you're going to make a slip knot and chain three. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm using a thicker yarn, but you're going to continue using that same yarn that you did for the bust. Okay, now you're going to yarn over, go into that very first chain we made, grab both the front and the back loops. You're going to pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook now. You're going to yarn over, pull through the top, which is going to be the foundation. And then we're going to do a double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two more to finish the double crochet. That will be your very first foundation double crochet stitch. And again, we're going to be working into that V shape in the back here. Let's do one more. We're going to yarn over, put our hook into that V shape. We're going to pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook now. We're going to yarn over, pull through the top, which is going to be our foundation. And we're going to do a double crochet. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two more. And we're going to do this for a total of 58 times. This is going to equal approximately 9 inches for the top portion of the cowl. If you guys want the cowl portion or that top portion to dip down lower, you can definitely add more double crochet foundation stitches to make that top portion longer. So mine was 9 inches, but you can feel free to make it longer if you'd like. You just want to make sure that at the end, when you finish all your rows, that the bottom of this panel is at the very least double what you have at the top row. So if I have 9 inches, I made sure mine was approximately 18 inches. You want to make sure that it at the very least doubles because you want it to give that drapey cowl-like effect when we go to put everything all together. Here is my first row, and now we're ready for row two. So to start row two, we're going to do a chain up of two and turn our work. We're going to be working into the very first stitch here. So we're going to do a double crochet. We're going to yarn over, put our hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two more for a double crochet. If you remember back, for the bust panel, we worked into the very, very first stitch, but we didn't work into the turning chain. So that didn't count as an increase. However, for this panel, we're going to be working into the turning chain. So going into the very first stitch like we did here is going to count as an increase. So we're increasing at the beginning, we're increasing in the middle and at the end. And I'll show you how to increase at the middle and end. We made it to approximately the middle of the row, so I'm adding a double crochet into this stitch. And then into the very same stitch, I'm going to be adding another double crochet. So this will be two double crochet stitches into the very same stitch for an increase. We're going to be doing this one more time at the end of the row into that stitch on the top of the turning chain, so the very last stitch. This is the stitch that we were ignoring in the bust panel, but we're going to be working into that right here. So it's that very last stitch or the top of the turning chain. I'm putting one double crochet, and then into that very, very same stitch, we're adding one more double crochet for an increase. To start the next row, you're going to do a chain up of two and turn your work. For this row, we're not going to be increasing in the middle. 
So we're just adding two increases. We're adding an increase at the beginning, which is a double crochet into that very first stitch right there. And then adding two double crochets into the last stitch at the top of the turning chain. So we're not increasing in the middle for this row. You're going to be alternating this pattern of increasing three times and then the alternate row would be increasing just two times at the beginning at the end of the row until you have 20 rows. For me, 20 rows was six and a half inches for the side of the panel, which would connect to the bust panel. If you had a different measurement for the bust area that we did in the beginning, what you're going to do is you're just going to continue adding rows and alternating the three increase and two increase rows until the side of this cowl panel is the same measurement as the bottom of your bust panel. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting that side panel to the bottom of the bust triangular cup area. So you want to make sure that it lines up together. If you guys have any questions, you can definitely ask them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them right away. I just hope that I'm articulating myself in a way that <laughs> makes sense and that you guys understand what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm just showing you guys the measurements. The top portion is around 9 inches. The finished bottom portion is approximately 18 inches. And then the most important measurement is the side area here, and that's six and a half inches, which is the same as the bottom of the bust. Now we're going to chain up one, and we're going to be doing single crochets like we did for the bust panel, all along the perimeter of this panel to clean it up. So you're just going to keep working those single crochets all around the entire perimeter. This also just makes it easier when it comes time to attach this side portion to that bust. Now I've added the bust to the cowl panel and I'm going to show you how to do the other side. This is why it's so important to make sure that the number of rows you have amount to the same measurement as the bottom of your bust. So as you can see, they line up and match perfectly. So we're going to turn it over. This is the side that's going to be inside, closest to your body. We want to hide that seam. And we're going to be making a slip knot. Remember to make the slip knot, you're just going to wrap the yarn twice around your finger. I like to pull the back loop over the top loop and then that top loop over the back loop again, and it makes a nice little slip knot right here. You're going to be putting your hook into the very corner of this cowl panel, the trapezoid, right into the corner, into that single crochet stitch that we made earlier for the perimeter. Then we're going to just put the slip knot tighten and pull that all the way through that stitch. Once that's done, we're going to be inserting our hook into the very corner of the bust panel into that single crochet we did earlier for the perimeter. Then you're going to take the yarn, you're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. So you have two loops on your hook and then you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops, completing a single crochet. So to seam this cowl panel and the bust panel together, we're going to be doing single crochets all the way down. You want to make sure that you're putting your hook into both the cowl and the bust panel, so both stitches, and then doing a single crochet. You're picking up both the front and the back loops for both of the panels. 
and you're going to be doing that all the way down to the end. When you get to the end, you're going to do a chain up of one, cut your yarn, and you can pull that yarn through and tighten to finish the seam. Here we're just finishing by chaining one and cutting the yarn like I said earlier and just pulling through and tightening. And that completes the seam. You're going to do that for the other side of the bust panel as well. Now to make the strap, what I did was I took three strands of this yarn since it's very thin and I wanted the strap to be thicker. This is the strap that's going to go along the middle section all the way to the back. So I took three strands together, I made a slip knot, putting all the strands together um, and making it pretty much into just one yarn strand. And then I did a chain until it was able to wrap around the midsection of my body and leave some space at the end to tie. Once you have your strap, you're going to weave this strap in and out along the bust seam. So right under the bust seam, you see the double crochet spaces right there from the cowl panel. You're just going to take the strap and weave it in and out and all the way through to the other side so that you can now use it to tie your top together. Once we weave in the strap, this is what the final product looks like. This top is perfect for summer. I can already imagine myself wearing it by the poolside or on the pier on a hot day on the beach. I think it's very unique looking. It's a very breathable top. I've never seen a cowl effect on the bottom portion of a top before. So when I saw it on Instagram, I immediately thought I have to make this. So let me know what you guys think about this top in the comment section below. Let me know if you try this pattern out. As usual, I have many more tutorials on the way, so please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. Thank you so much guys. Bye!